Back at it again, video number two. My name is Kerry Bauman, and today we're going to take a look at the LG G6. Starting off with the hardware of the phone, the front features a 5.7 inch display as well as your front facing camera on a nearly bezel-less face. The right is basically empty, containing your SIM and micro SD card slot. Up top you have your headphone jack. On the left are your volume rockers. On the bottom is a USB-C port and one single downward facing speaker. And on the back you have the fingerprint sensor and power button paired with dual 13 megapixel cameras. While I am appreciative that they included a headphone jack, as silly as that is to say, it's really shitty that they included it on top. If you're charging the phone at the same time as listening to music and the phone is anywhere other than a desk, good luck comfortably sitting it down. For example, I take a lot of long drives and the aux cord is plugged in at the same time as charging. And there's no real place to sit the phone without bending the cables. Onto the screen. With the G6, LG elected to go with the LCD display rather than an OLED, which has its pros and cons. Both are capable of the same resolution and refresh rates, but the OLED is king when it comes to contrast ratio and black levels. However, when it comes to color and brightness, that's where this phone shines. The 2017 trend of shrinking bezels continues. This is leading to manufacturers being able to put up much larger displays, taking up a lot less real estate. Comparing that to a phone from a year ago that also has a 5.7 inch display, the G6 is almost half an inch shorter and a quarter inch narrower. Some of that has to do with the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, which leads to a bit of a taller, narrow screen, making reaching across it simple with just one hand. With that oddball aspect ratio does come with some flaws. For example, as someone who watches a lot of YouTube videos, the black bars on the side of the screen get a little annoying. You can stretch some apps by going to app scaling in the settings, but there are times when you want to switch back and forth quickly and not have to go all the way back to the settings menu. A quick toggle from the video screen would be helpful here. Another trend that is continuing in 2017 is manufacturers going all out on the display of the device, but having shit audio. The cupping the speaker technique is something that should have ended in 2013 with the original HTC One's front-facing speakers. Now we're left with screens that can compete with high-end TVs and one measly speaker that's covered easily and I can't even hear it in a silent room by myself. Other than that, as far as the hardware goes, this phone is solid. It's a little thicker, it's got some weight to it, but in the hand it just feels right. Now, as a 2017 flagship phone, the G6 isn't rocking any eye-popping specs. They elected to go with the Snapdragon 821 over the 835, 4 gigs of RAM over 6, quad-core CPU over an octa-core, and I think it's because LG knew they didn't have to. While ordinarily I'm a pretty big numbers guy, I think in order to get the full picture, you have to concentrate on how the phone feels and what the experience is like. And when it comes to that experience, I have no complaints whatsoever. The phone handles everything I throw at it and then some. Multitasking is a breeze and the entire experience is fluid. The UI is very stock Android-esque, if that makes any sense. Out of the box, LG relied on some stock Google apps such as Chrome or Messenger. But when it came to the keyboard, they decided they wanted to take a crack at it. It's okay. The accuracy is really good, but the auto spacing sometimes decides it doesn't want to work. And they also don't let you delete words, which is ducking ridiculous. Just do yourselves a favor and download Gboard. I do like LG's smart settings feature. From the settings menu, you can change your preferences, whether you're at home or away, with things like the sound profile, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. So at home, I'll have my Wi-Fi on, and my sound and Bluetooth off. Whereas away from home, I'll have my Wi-Fi off, yet my sound and Bluetooth on. My only wish is that they would have included more specific places, such as work, school, or the gym, instead of just home or not home. When it comes to the fingerprint sensor, I find that it's extremely fast and accurate, and the placement is perfect. Whether I'm pulling the phone out of my pocket, or utilizing the pinky under the chin technique, I find that my finger is always right there on the ready. My big concern was with the lack of a power button on the front, sides, or top, but including it on the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone and my ability to turn the screen on and off without having to pick it up. You do have the ability to double tap to wake, but my issue was turning it back off afterwards. After playing with it for a bit, I found that you can double tap to turn the screen back off from the home screen. While that's a nice feature, I sometimes like to turn my screen off in the middle of a text conversation so I can remember to respond. I was kind of upset that I had to choose between letting the screen time out, wasting battery life, or going all the way back to the home screen to turn it off, possibly forgetting to finish what I was doing. 
I actually started to rant about that in this video, saying that it wouldn't be that hard to include the ability to double tap the proximity sensor or something like that, and have the ability to turn the screen off from any window, until actually filming myself doing just that, finding out that it works. Learning that you can double tap the notification bar from any window and you can turn the screen off. This phone also features an always on display, which quickly lets you tell the time or see your notifications. I really like this feature for its convenience, but it really does have an effect on the standby battery life. If I left it on for a 7 hour period while I went to sleep, the battery would typically drain around 9%. Whereas in the same amount of time, if I turn the screen off, the battery would only drain 1-2%. to Now, when charging the battery, over a 30 minute period, I averaged about 35% battery life gain, which is pretty decent. But judging the actual battery performance is a bit tougher to do. I wanted to create a semi-standard metric so I could compare one phone's battery performance versus another. I'm a pretty heavy user throughout the day, including a good mix of Wi-Fi, data usage, Bluetooth, location, camera, web surfing, and video watching. And I see a lot of people online claiming that they got some crazy numbers like 7 hours of screen on time, but then when they mention how they did it, they said they had to turn the brightness to 20% and the location and Bluetooth off and pretty much any other feature you can think of. But the point of having the latest and greatest of anything is to enjoy its features. That's just what I wanted to do. I turned the always on display on, location, auto brightness, anything that I regularly use, and well, use it. Each night I would record my screen on time as well as my percent battery life remaining. Using that data, I would come up with an adjusted screen on time value as if I let it run all the way to zero. Over the course of a week, I'll take that adjusted value and average it. I plan to do this for each phone I review and create a leaderboard so we can visually compare the battery performance of one phone to another. I present the screen on time adjusted nightly average list. Referring back to screenshots I took from the last phone I reviewed, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, it posted a very impressive 4 hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. After spending a week and a half with the LG G6, it posted a not impressive, but not terrible, 4 hours and 3 minutes adjusted nightly average screen on time. Putting that in second place for now. When it came to the camera, I saw a lot of people really raving about it and talking it up. The rear 13 megapixel cameras with optical image stabilization perform great in both high and low light. And the secondary camera, being a 125 degree wide angle lens, was a nice touch. But they don't mention in the ads that using the full 18x9 aspect ratio downgrades the image quality to 8.7 megapixels. And that to get the full 13 megapixels, the photos had to be taken in a 4x3 aspect ratio. Though the rear camera performs great, the selfie camera is a different story. LG elected to go with using a 5 megapixel camera up front. And while using the stock camera, the pictures look fine, 99% of the selfies I take are using the Snapchat app. And unless you're in perfect lighting, the picture is almost always likely going to come up looking a little grainy. I'm assuming there's a lot of post-processing in the stock camera app, which is why the pictures don't look too bad. But in most apps like Snapchat or any other that use a camera, the image is going to come completely unprocessed, which explains why they look so terrible. Videos look good in high and low light. And as you would expect from a 2017 flagship device, video recording is in 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. Marquez Brownlee compared the G6 to James Harden for posting its best season ever, but likely not going to win the MVP. But I think a more formidable comparison would be Tim Duncan. While looking at the numbers, nothing is eye popping. Fundamentally, the G6 is killing it. It's not going to make its money with some crazy good feature, but rather it's all around game, and it gets the little things right, putting it right up there with the top dogs. But other than that, that's my unbiased opinion on the LG G6. I really hope you liked the video. I took a lot of y'all's advice in the last video, and I think it's a lot better. If you want to see more videos, please support me by hitting that subscribe button below. I could really use all the help I could get. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below as well, as I will take your advice. But I truly want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you guys in another one. Cheers. The front features a 5.7 inch display. Fuck you, Brian. Fuck. If you're charging the phone, nope. For example, the 2017 trend of shrinking budget. 
The 2017 trend. However, when it no, how making reach across it with one hand, reaching reach across it. Fuck you. Fuck, this is gonna be hard. Choose between leaving the screen on and wait. No, nope. web surfing, camera usage, nope. mix of Wi-Fi, no, nope. Bluetooth, data usage, no, nope. Bluetooth, web stream, web streaming, and video watching. Almost so close, so fucking close. I'm a pretty heavy. Fuck me.